Hello, and welcome, everybody out there in Twitch and D&D land. I hope you're having a fantastic Sunday morning right now. Uh, before we jump into the action, we have a few short announcements to make. The first one is, if you are watching this video on the YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment on the video, leave a like on the video as well. All of that helps us out so very much. Even if your comment is just criticism, we want to know what you would like, what you would prefer, anything such as that. Ah. <sighs> And outside of that, if you are watching live, please consider following the channel as well. Uh, that does help us as well. And uh, yeah, and make sure that you never ever miss an opportunity to check out any of our games that all happen inside of the same living universe. Um, I've talked to a lot of people specifically last night who were inquiring as to what a living universe is. So I think I'm just going to narrate it all this week. Um, a living universe is a universe that has multiple games being played inside of it at the same time, all of which affect the game, affect the story, affect the world, and affect one another. Just for instance, uh, this aspect of Craven thing that's happening right now is the fault of two completely different campaigns that I am currently running inside of the Wildmount setting, or Exandria, as we've expanded into. Uh... And this is the third group that is interacting with it, trying to change and mix some things up. And this game has already affected a different game in a different world, but inside of the same universe. Uh, quite a lot, actually. So it's pretty fun. And it makes it so the intrigue of everything that is happening just scales up even higher and higher. So if you pay attention to closely to certain events in other games, you might find out what is happening for other people in separate campaigns. Now, aside from that, how about we get back into the action? Hello, everybody. Say hello. Wave your hands. Ooh, hi. There you go. Hey, look. See, some of them listen. Jimmy's the rebel. <laughs> Sheep. <laughs> but anyways, uh, Willie, why don't you tell us what happened last session? Last session on Tales of Exandria. The group decides that it's a good idea to uh, fly over the ocean as a cloud. So we all got ready, turned in the clouds, and started flying over to the ocean. We have an amazing survival check by Silver, and we managed to get there without anyone getting harmed, which was nice. Uh, when we got there, there was a northern island and a southern island, and we had to choose. And this choice took us about 20 minutes but we went with the right choice and chose the Littler Northern Island. When we decided, when we landed there though, we could not find a uh, Vexali, the person we went there looking for immediately. So we started flying around the island until we found a group of natives that called themselves, I believe the Guardians or something. Uh, and when we were there, the Guardian, this Nayala, I think her name was, or their name was, yeah, they, yeah. Uh, decides that they will show us where Vexalia is. But seeing as the group cannot keep a secret, and they immediately found out that uh, Na Na Nau was a dragon person in disguise as a human, they told everybody immediately and kind of just pissed it off while it took us there. It asks us to never to speak of its location, but who knows how long that will last. Um, we then go to Vexalia, and Vexalia is like, I don't want to turn into a cloud and fly over the ocean. I'm better than that. So we offered an alternative solution of teleportation circle. This took us to Nicodranus, and in Nicodranus, we appeared in a mage tower where I found a bowl of never-ending fruit. By never-ending, I mean it just refills once a day with one specific fruit. Anyways, nothing else important happened there except we left and got yelled at by a wizard whose tower we appeared in. Uh, I believe Mary and Vixalia stole some things in the market, and then immediately we made our way back to uh, the, 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 the start. Yeah, that's what we'll call it. And when we made it back to the start, we got lost a little, but we finally found our way towards the end. When we got down there, though, Vixalia was really yelling at everyone, and Willie and Sillerin kind of got fed up with her crap and started uh, just ripping into her. She did not like that, said she is not working with the Slayer's Take anymore, and said she would directly work with the agents of the Empire instead. Um, the agents of the Empire were then confronted by uh, Sillerin and Mary, where they decided that they would try to work out a plan with them. We learned, though, that uh, 
the creature down there, the cra craven, can be either killed in its lair or there's a person that the spirit's inhabiting. And if we can go capture that person and destroy the spirit, it will go away. So we have two real options. Uh, Willie in a really bad idea says, oh, I haven't, says that he's gonna go contact another plane to find out where this person is by asking the change bringer or someone along the lines of that and went insane. Uh, and that's where we left off. Alrighty then. So, everybody. One by one, you make your way back over to the very fine estate that all of you are staying at. Uh, for free, mind you. Very lovely place. And as you walk through, you do see uh, Jimmy trying to help Willie not swallow his tongue and drown himself in his own spit. Yet again. This seems to be a very frequent occurrence for him. Like, Do I even need a guess? He, he did the thing again. Um, I, I thought so. Uh, I can't really. He, he's kind of big. I, I I just need to get him to his room. I think. All right. Well, good luck with that. And someone will walk by. I'll I'll, I'll go pick Willie up by his, like the scruff of his neck and drag him to his room. Easy enough. Oh, thanks. Gunk, 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 gunk. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> uh, what what exactly happened? Uh, he, I, he was um, trying to speak with, with other people with a person that was like somewhere else and he did the thing again and it happened again. Oh, right. Hmm. Oh, well. We'll get back to normal tomorrow. Isn't that the thing? Like... I think. Uh, it, it seemed to be about like half a day or something last time too. So hopefully he'll be okay in the All right. Three. Well, a little bit of insanity never killed anyone, I think. So it's... Uh... Uh, is everything uh, going okay? Um, I didn't exactly. Uh, I, I didn't hear from anybody about about what was going on with Craven after Vex left. Um. Well, we, uh, me and Silver, we went to confer with uh, with Trent. Um, I basically told him what he needs to know. I think. Um, well, the gist of what we found out, anyway. And, um, he's offered to help us, um, with trying to capture it, basically, because that's sort of what we need to do, right? Um, or we'll try to banish it over to another plane. The spirit. And um, we can maybe do that by first luring it into, uh, I believe they call it a magnificent mansion. Oh, did that sounds really complicated? And did did he say he could do all of that on his own? Well, he could assist with that, but uh, we still need to, um, well, figure out exactly where the spirit is and um, also how to well lure it in there find the spirit and lure the spirit yeah and also not die in the process preferably oh that's that's a lot uh, at least not all of us and I scowl over at silver <laughs> So he like walked to his room. Right. Well, it was semi ingest anyway. So. But it sounds like we've got a good plan then. All right. I'll um, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow, Mary. I gotta go. Get ready. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, good night. Kuma's gonna go put Will in his room and leave a note, and his uh, spectacles on the table, saying a two to these in the morning, because. You'll probably have a better shot of seeing a distance with your special eyes. What glasses? The uh, 
My uh, eyes of the eagle. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey, the spectacles. Sure. Willie would have advantage on perception. See to a mile out. That's the part that matters. Yeah. So Willie, he puts <coughs> fun-looking glasses that luckily you can't break with your hands in front of you. <laughs> you underestimate my power. <laughs> Give me an athletics check. <laughs> On a 22, I'll allow you to break. Oh, I'm not trying to break them. Oh. Well, no, you're crazy. You're trying anything you want. Maybe you are thinking to eat them. He eats things. <laughs> okay, then. Give me a con save. <laughs> It's really going to be painful in about two days as an oh indestructible object is going to move through your body. I just look at this like... <laughs> he just yeah, unhinges like his jaw. Just like... <laughs> Think of it as like, you know, a, a timeline of your me metabolism, you know? I, I would probably try to stop him from eating them. You know when you guys went and you got him all that, like... Uh, S&M gear. Maybe you should have gotten a ball gag with it. Or some Miralax. It was delicious. Miralax. <laughs> I'm going to remember this. In two days, you are going to be pushing out glass. <laughs> All right. Well, there goes the eyes of the eagle for a little bit. Oh, well, he's dead. Um. <coughs> and also, Ogan, thank you for the mango die. Are you really? Yeah. I mean, we don't need no mango die yet. Well, he already redeemed it, so. Thank or are you, you guys going to take another three days before you do something? Knowing this party would not surprise me. I know. But you make it sound like we just wait around for stuff and then we finally do it after a while. All right, it's tax season. Jimmy has to start filing W 2s. Give me about a week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wait, what are you talking about? Jimmy doesn't have to pay taxes. Yeah, he's a minor, right? <laughs> oh, you're with the mob. <laughs> no, That's no, no. Funny. You you have someone else that handles that. Don't worry about it. <laughs> the one system that will capture Jimmy, the IRS. <laughs> Even the Joker doesn't mess with the IRS. <laughs> true, true. Well, so anyways, is everyone back? Everybody going to sleep? Yeah. Cool. Yep. Then everybody goes to sleep. Do, 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 do. Which one of us dies from Vexalia tonight? She's not like that. <laughs> you didn't pissed her off. You didn't betray her. Roll a d20. Roll <laughs> <laughs> d20 on anything above a 10, it's Sylvan. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> so. During the evening. Nothing happens. You all wake Aww. up. Willie, you feel a little nauseous. <coughs> um, you're going to be... Um... Yeah, I'm going to just give you a permanent state of exhaustion until you pass this. What? Uh, okay. Um... Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's either that or the poison condition. But even if somebody, like, removes poison, you'll still be poisoned. Wow, it seems like I ate something bad. I hope the I hope the contact on their plane worked. I'm going to skip out of my room. The first skip. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what that is, yeah. Ah. <sighs> 
All right, Willie skips out of his room. The rest of the party continue staring at the ceiling for the next six to eight hours. <laughs> uh, I'm, good. Gonna, I'm gonna get out and do some stretches and stuff and just uh, do a bit of a morning jog. Any? Breakfast. <laughs> Sorry, I'm updating everything to 15 now, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taking a moment. Everybody, you are level 15. Yay. So anyways, Kuma's downstairs cooking breakfast for everybody. It is meat. A carnivore's dream. There is sausage links that aren't exactly cow. There's bacon... It's not exactly pork. Plenty chicken that's not exactly chicken. <laughs> Can I make a wild guess and say we're eating what we killed yesterday? There's no calamari on the table. <laughs> but anyways. Um, throughout the entire estate, those of you that have not done anything yet hear a very loud booming voice. All right, we need you downstairs immediately. Come on now. Come on. Wake up. Come on downstairs. Whose voice is it? Sounds like Trent. Hmm. But Mary, you're already up and running. So if you're running around the estate, you'd see him waiting on the patio. Looks at you and nods. Early I'm morning workout. Back. I see. Yeah, just, just running off some... Issues, I suppose, <laughs> or something. Wunderbar. Yeah, I miss the days good. of uh, exercising. Oh, don't you uh, ever do that as a wizard? Oh, well, I do my squats. Right. Well, I, I hear it's good for your posterior. He nods. He does have really good posture. <laughs> If Mary runs past the kitchen, you can't keep running away from your problems. I'm running in circles. That's not running away from them. That's running around them. <laughs> She's got I you see there. what you did there. You're running around everybody. <laughs> <sighs> right. Well, um, let's gather everyone then, and I need to eat something as well, so, yeah. Yes, of course, just one more time. He holds a uh, clip on his necklace. Everybody, downstairs immediately. Ooh, can I try that? By all means, he hands you the button. Everyone, get the fuck down here. We're going to eat and talk, okay? Mary, Not shut up. <laughs> this thing is... Oh, can, I, can I have this? He looks at you. Depends how well you do the job. He takes it back. <laughs> Jimmy comes down the stairs with an open flame, like burning this weird piece of metal, and just like approaches everybody. What's what's happening? What's happening is that Trent has this awesome trinket thing that I really want. Can you make one? Did that, that I was I wanted to ask about that, Mary. Yeah, that was so cool. How, how does that? And he like puts the flame on the table next <laughs> to the thing, and he like approaches Trent, looking like over his person, trying to figure out what device it was. It, does the flame spread at all, Jimmy? It's a magical flame. Okay, so no, it's good. Okay, Trent is <laughs> watching it carefully. Works. Yeah, and he'll he'll hand you the little button. There you oh my go. god! Uh, I like pull like this set of goggles that are on the side of his head. He pulls them forward and like puts them over, and he hits identify. Uh, okay. On him. Uh, this is a phone block. By pushing this, it allows you to say up to fifteen words, projecting your voice to a location and affecting it with three times amplification. The location you project it to has to be within 60 feet of you. Oh my god, this is amazing. For one minute, Jimmy's just going to look over it and try to take in the intrinsic details and yeah. get an idea of how something like that might work. 
You've basically just given Mary the one ring, but in now that no one can ignore her. Not mine yet. But now she has precious. motivation. <laughs> 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 so yes, I assume everybody else is downstairs. Dorzin, you have not said a single thing. <clears throat> Dorzin's grabbing a French baguette and eating it on his way down. Yep, fair enough. Oh no, Mary, that necklace is cool, but it's no one. I'm going to pull out the fruit bowl that refills. Bowl of refilling fruit. What fruit is today's fruit? Do I have to roll? No, you choose. Oh, pineapples. (laughs) It It fills with four pineapples. Okay, he's going to try to eat it without peeling off the skin. (laughs) He's got to pull the steaks out. So everyone's going to see this and take a pineapple for himself, but just let <laughs> Willie eat it the way he wants to eat it. All right, Willie, con save disadvantage. I got a plate of meat. 11. Disadvantage is bad. Yeah. Um. Willie, you have a little emergency. You have to uh, excuse yourself. As it might be out of my system. <laughs> uh, No, that's not the issue right now. It's more of everything else. <laughs> but anyways yeah Willie has to excuse himself I I don't understand is he your cousin or something he's a mailman close enough more like a, that weird cousin third cousin twice removed or what is it called yes the one with the mother who is the sister of the father yes something like that understood <laughs> so he sits at the head of the table before Silverin can move into the slot. Plate plate of meat on the table. No, thank you. I already ate. So I have done my preparations last night. He pulls out a massive looking ruby in his hand. And you see this like bluish turn happening inside of it. It just keeps circling inside. And well, I can tell you all that this creature is incredible. I mean, the abilities it possesses goes beyond that of just a normal monstrosity of our standard creation. It seems to have a uh, foreign essence to it, not really from Exandria at all. Uh, And because of that, we believe this creature, or these creatures, um, are multiplicative in nature. Um, Based off of any research that I've been able to uncover about these entities, There was a smaller amount of them back when everything happened, which makes me intrigued if the entire floor of the ocean is filled with them. That's a horrifying concept. Well, yes, if anything like this happens, it is. But based off of what uh, Mary so helpfully told me yesterday, it should not be an issue if we are successful today. So, we just need to know where I am going to be summoning my other dimension. Whichever one of you is in charge of banishment, he looks at you, Soren. Soren just nods. You need to familiarize yourself with that location. And keep in mind that this location will only be active for about eight hours in total. Any more than that, and you are going to expel the contents, including the creature, everywhere where the door is located. So. Can I come back on that note? Um, we can say that you're just in the kitchen because you couldn't have made it to a bathroom. Speaking of expelled. Okay, never mind. Okay. Uh, Willie, you have suffered uh, 10 points of bludgeoning damage. 
And maybe two points of psychic damage for the stress. I mean, I feel like he's done this before. That's fair. And that'll teach you for eating magic items. It can't get them if they're eaten. You can't teach somebody who's incapacitated. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> so that's how those unicorns drop those magic items. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so I am dealing with a room full of imbeciles. That is fantastic. Should I be taking this mission and job over to people a bit more mature about their work? That was out of character. Uh, well, if we're going to do this, then we're probably going to want to find a position that's uh, close to where the one that's possessed is going to be. And if our theory is right, it's going to be the big one. We're probably going to want a doorway somewhere near it. I do not think that would be possible. See, I need to uh, have solid ground to stand upon to place the door. And it takes me about 10 minutes to put it up. So, right. I cannot possibly get very close to that creature and wait for 10 minutes. Yeah, that's fair. No. We need to... Well... At first, I think we need to uh, be absolutely certain which one of the creatures actually is hosting the spirit. Yes. Did you not say um, that you had a way of realizing this? Through uh, the ethereal plane, you can see it. Oh, right. Have you seen it with your robe thing? No, we were too far above to see that far. Right. Willie can see to the ethereal, right? If Willie can get close enough, and provided he hadn't eaten the, my glasses, he probably would have seen it from about a mile away. I'm sorry, what? I don't think we know that Willie ate the glasses. Kuma yeah. does. He was there when he yeah. ate them. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm dropping that right now. Like, <laughs> did he actually eat your glasses? I, I... he ate your glass. I'm. <laughs> oh boy! All right. We need to... Isn't that a magical object? How did he eat it? Yeah, that, that's not what you should do, Willie. Um, Jimmy is going to use his alchemist kit and create a laxative to. Expedite the process. All right, roll me an alchemy one that check. You gave to Lauren. <laughs> yes, the same exact one. Yes. He, All right, he has this formula, so he's gonna make that right now. So and here it is. All right, roll me an alchemist check using intelligence. Still, it's his fruit skin list, and I'm gonna point it to my pal. Uh, so Willie, this stuff uh, that I'm gonna give you, it doesn't taste great, uh, but it should help. Um. 24. Are we sure Willie's not yet still under the influence of that thing you did yesterday? No, he can he can talk. Well, but it's he's acting insane still. What? I'm, I'm fine. What? What's insane? You're, you're eating pineapple without peeling it first and what? Sh that shitting in a pot. Glasses? What's that all about? <laughs> Didn't even know what the name of this fruit was. Oh yeah, you you shouldn't eat it like that, Willie. Indeed. So it says that he puts the properly skinned and whatever pineapple in his mouth. <laughs> well, I didn't know. So what's Maybe the... try asking instead of putting things in your mouth next time. <laughs> that your might... Canada has a lovely ad for that. But you should drink this. It'll it'll help. Uh... Go and drink it without question. You should always drink anything Jimmy offers you, basically. All right, Willie, you drink it. Oh, that is disgusting. That is the most putrid, and you need a second bucket. I'll be back. You are going to be incapacitated for the next roll of D4. <laughs> One hour only. 
Um, and during this time, uh, you're going to have... Roll me a d12. Four bowel movements. Oh, God. <laughs> Seven <laughs> points of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> Eight points of bludgeoning damage. What Ten is... points of bludgeoning damage. And eight points of bludgeoning damage. Do the glasses pass? Yes. Well, uh, do you want to check? Which bowel movement, I should ask? Uh, the final one. Mm. Because after that blockage is complete, everything else just goes. <laughs> I'm going to look it up. <laughs> While this is happening. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and somewhere else. <laughs> I still like to think Trent's just like, oh, oh my god. No, Trent just that... walks out the building. He's not. Mm -mm, no. We can speak on the patio. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's I'm do that. Familiar, I'm not familiar with how this uh, magic works for, for this uh, banishment thing. Can we not just banish the... the, the... Uh, the craven uh, to anywhere, or is it well, specific? Well, the problem is that it could potentially just jump into someone else, so that's why we're hoping to. Um... We need to isolate it. Well, I yeah. mean, like if you're saying we need to get it to this extra dimensional place, can we just banish it to that extra dimensional place? Um, no, because uh, well, the stuff only works in a place it's attuned to, so we need to be on the plane where we're trying to banish it to, basically. Or... Yeah, I'm trying to, I was trying to remember those details. Yep, there you go. Joe. So it's got, I know, the staff's got to be attuned to the... this, to the... shit. No, you have to be aware of the location. When you banish something, you have to banish it into a plane that you know is not dangerous you can't just like send a creature to the elemental plane of lava because okay, then it would like... die there which is why you need to familiarize yourself inside of the pocket dimension that trent will produce so uh, okay okay that's what he meant by familiarize yeah, yeah, yeah. with it uh typically speaking banishment just does it at random your staff specifically sends it either to its home plane but if it doesn't belong to this plane it sends it to a plane of your choosing okay yeah, because otherwise it would just be some random place that's not dangerous, like the ninth level of uh, hell or something. Uh, that's actually a very safe plane to be in, so long as you don't talk. Yeah, yeah. Has no I mean, who would, yeah, but who would do that? I mean, well, have to be. Who would dare strike a bargain with the king of hell? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> if you if you would be so kind and um, show us this this uh, place that we're going to be using um that would Wait. probably be a good start i can only put it up one time today oh. and as such i would like to know the location we wish to put it for all of you and once it's there we have eight hours for all of you to do your job get it done right well right. i'm not sure we'll be able to uh, follow through on the plan today. Um, yes, if that's the case, today would just be the preparation. Similar to how we did on the uh, other beast, that we have to scout the location, we gotta get the area ready, we gotta make so, sure that we have the correct beast and we were the proper one. So, Vexalia felt it was important for me to bring this information up to you, and I have to say that I somewhat agree with her. Um, since all of your arrival in Feolin, uh, we have lost 340 lives to this creature. And the number is growing exponentially each day. Right. People should probably stop, like, sailing out on the water. Can we send messages? We already have. We've posted That's good. at every single port that you are not allowed to leave. We've removed the ability to leave for any fairing purposes, and we've taken as many precautions as we can. However, no matter the warnings we put out there, you cannot fix stupid. Do we? Yeah. Know? And well, 
the thing is that if you don't let us do the proper preparations for this, then you might as well add us to the list already, because... As, well. as you said, you can't fix stupid, and it's stupid to go out without a plan or preparation. I am just doing what Lady Vexalia requested of me. Right. No, I am aware. Um, sometimes when you're presented with a new problem, you just have to try to come up with a new solution. So in this case, do we have a way that we can try to find this creature within eight hours and get it to this dimension? Well, yeah, I was just hoping that, that uh, what you gave Willie works and provided it passed. Which would have fucking happened if he didn't go insane and eat my fucking glasses. Uh, Willie, you do have a level of exhaustion from all of this. So the, those glasses will will show Willie where the creature is then, and we can go straight to it? Well, combined with his ability to see into the ethereal, my uh, eyes of the eagle should allow him to see about a mile out, which should allow for proper scouting from a distance. Very good. Okay, but we gotta find the creature. Yes. Right, I, which is I still scouting. want to... I'm... Well... The plan is sort of twofold. First, we need to get to the creature and then use the staff on it to expel the spirit into the the mansion. But well, what happens after that exactly? And just to clarify, I believe the staff will banish the creature to the dimension. Then you have to kill the creature or find a way to remove the spirit from it. I recommend kill the creature. Right, but what happens if the, uh, well, when the pocket plane expires? Everything inside of it is expelled right where the door is located. Including the spirit if we do not deal with it appropriately. Correct. So, um... We're going to need two teams. Well, I don't know about that. Someone has to go into the pocket to get attuned with the staff and then go out and hit the one that is there. And that, when that happens, depending how long that takes, it's going to pop up in the mansion. Well, wouldn't someone just have to know of the existence of the plane? Yes, if 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 Trent shows us the, the place right now, Silverin would know how to send it there. But then we only have eight hours to go find the creature and put it there and and destroy it. And return back to come and battle and destroy it. Yeah. Yeah. Else the plane collapses and the creature is let loose wherever the dimension is. Good act. Yep. Sounded more and more like it. We should probably put this somewhere near less inhabited and possibly might be detrimental to it once the plane collapses. Well, if the plane collapses, if we do not have a redo at all of this, um, it's going to just be devastating yet again. How about I have a potentially marvelous idea? Um, Please. I well, would like to hear the thoughts of the leader of this group. Right. Um, if we manage to get it inside there. It'll be trapped there. For eight, up to eight hours. Right, and then it'll it be expelled summoned. just in front of where the door is, Correct. basically. Uh, eight hours should be more than enough to put up a planar binding, right? Do you possess well, this not ability? here right now, right? Uh, Willie's in the uh, kitchen shitting in pots. Uh, do you play... Uh. Can tell you like different that. pots. <laughs> He's shitting in the sink. Uh, I mean, if you can, if we can put it first in the mansion and then put up a planar binding around the door, then it should be trapped inside the planar binding when it's uh, when the door expires, right? As someone who's been a, with BS magical people. Doesn't planar binding have to be affecting the target, not the plant existing or land? I, Mary, that's not I how the, that spell works, but if there's another spell with something similar, then that. 
So I you wish to today. create a cage for this creature? Well, if we create a cage around somewhere that we know is going to be, then Correct. there's a fail safe. Correct. Okay. Do you know what type of being the spirit is? Weren't we told it was a celestial? You were told what it is. I will not tell you what you were told yeah. it was. Is it was, it a, was celestial a celestial spirit? It, it was, was named it's a celest. Terency. No, Jim. It's a celestial. I'm saying this in clear. I'm not saying it in. He's character. not using his Jimmy voice. It's completely yeah. okay. different. Sorry. It's not clear. Its name was Herency. That's the name of the celestial. So yes. Yep. Yeah. It's a celestial. The celestial. Um, Binding a celestial to a select location is incredibly difficult. You guys, but manageable. You guys can throw this into the maybe pile, um, but I do have a uh, item that might help us out. Um, I've been kind of working on this ever since uh, Dorzin. We had that run-in with um, that, you know, him. And uh, they're called dimensional shackles. <laughs> they're basically used to keep something from traversing to other places or other planes by any type of magical means. I don't know if that would trap it um, or just keep it on the plane. Uh, it, it's untested. I, I don't, it's just an idea, but. Yeah, I, I do have that available if we run out of options. Actually, that's a that's a good question. What happens if it can't be tr shot out of the plane when it collapses? What would happen to it? The the guy who told you he invented the item is telling you he doesn't know. <laughs> well, like theoretically, he's like about if he's still in the mansion when the eight uh, you know, hours expire and he can't leave because he's bound to it. Well, the, it wouldn't exist. I mean, we can all hy hypothetically. I don't think Jero is just going to give that one to us. <laughs> Unfortunately, that would be way too powerful. If somebody, if the, those of you trained in Arcana wish to roll an Arcana check, feel free. I can explain what would happen. Yeah, I was. <coughs> yeah, this feels like more like putting a bag holding and exploding. It just goes everywhere. <laughs> Anybody else proficient in Arcana? Jeez. Oh, Arcana? Yeah. Um, you know, unfortunately, my last one died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Willie, are you not proficient in Arcana? There's the, yeah, what a magic There's the old 29. There we go, Flashing, Jimmy. Flashing um, genius, too. I, I like even numbers. I'm going above 30. 34. 34. Okay, so... A pocket dimension is a dimension that is in between planes. Meaning, if you are to bind a creature to a plane while it is inside of a pocket dimension, that means you are binding it to one of those in-between planes. You will not control which one it is, which one is chosen. It could be any of them. And the fact that you are not a planar traveler who has incredible knowledge of the stars and knowing how to move between them... There's no way of you knowing which planes this pocket dimension would be tied to. By you, at least. You would need somebody who is specifically a plane jumper. Well, a plane jumper who's intelligent. About to say. Sorry, Willie. Can, can we get a headband of intellect and put it on Willie? That would not make him intelligent during the time that he would have had to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> it is a curious uh do you express all of that jimmy you usually don't see yeah, yeah of course I'm, it is a yeah. curious idea however do any of you have friends or allies inside of the um spiritual spectrum holy the divinities friends? Uh, uh, doors and shakefully raises his hand, maybe? You're not one to express no confidence. What is it? Uh, I'm... 
Uh, I, I guess I pull up my holy symbol. I don't exactly can call on them on command. No, no. I mean somebody who's of note and capability in that field. Oh, in the field of spirits. No, in the field of being a cleric. He's asking Whoa. for a high-level cleric, if you know one. Oh, yes, I do know one person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know one person, yes. That the guy over in Iman, was it? The horse guy? Yes. Are you talking about Sir Yor? Balcones? Correct. Oh, marvelous host. I've been to a few of his family's parties. We need to reach out to a high-level cleric. He's my only point of contact. <laughs> Does it have to be a cleric? Yeah, I can't. Uh, what's uh, what's her name? The uh, your druid friend, uh, Sylvan. Well, I should probably not say friend, but uh, what's her name? Yeah, yes, my druid friend, Keyleth. <laughs> well, that's why I was asking anybody in the spectrum of divinity. Um. I believe there is a way to, I uh, don't specifically quote me on this, but sanctify an area so that travel between this world or further cannot be conducted by specific types of creatures that are not welcome to do so. You want to hold the Sanctify. What you're talking about. Oh, so you... I do not possess these capabilities. Hmm. I'm not sure your does either, he says under his breath. <laughs> well, except you've seen him do it. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, no, actually... yeah, it's... yeah, you we, guys we seen have... him do that. Yeah, we have. <laughs> I, I pull out Ace's manuscript. Uh, yeah, I mentioned right here that he did that in uh, that what jungle. Kuma, thank you Indeed. for reading that book. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so Owen's read it too. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, wasn't it about a <clears throat> some kind of primordial? Why? I, it's person it, it, opens it, his copy of the freaking manuscript. <laughs> He's not supposed to write about that. Trent goes over to your copy, <laughs> Kuma, and holds his hand out for it. <laughs> you just Man, told I... Trent that <laughs> in a jungle somewhere there's a primordial. <laughs> Do you hand him the book, Uma? Yeah. All right, he'll just quickly bruise through it. God damn it, Ace. That being the case, there are... The same, you probably have more f capable friends than I do. So why don't we call this... Uh, this wolf man, as well as... Who is it? Uh, as well as Alaren, maybe? You know... Uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head for some reason. <laughs> it's yeah, Yandish's last Kanneroth? name. Kanneroth? Kanneroth. The God person damn. you don't have any concept of? He's, he's in, in the, the book. Yeah, he's in the manuscript. Face. They have basic <laughs> information from the manuscript. That's it. Just basic info. Wait, I get Illborn, but what does Kanneroth have to do with any of this? I'm just saying it would be useful to have more hands on deck, so to speak, for when we have to confront this thing. Yes, the problem with that is he left over a year ago, and I, we have no idea where the fuck he is. Well, also, uh, I would like to keep the circle of trust small on this mission. There's no reason to sacrifice more lives by overestimating the capabilities of other individuals. So, are we um, <coughs> sort of, we're putting up maybe two fail-safes then, this uh, uh, sanctification thing, and also a player in binding or are, are we doing both or well we're going to see if we can do both right it's always better to have backups on backups than to risk it all in one shot yeah and if we all happen to get massacred inside the mansion and well then at least it'll be bound to a specific area which can yeah. then be avoided and put a 25 mile quarantine around it well, it's not 25 miles kuma it's let me check my notes. Sorry. Oh no, it is twenty-five. Shit. Yeah, yeah, was, he's right. I kept thinking it was like a hundred for some reason. No, nope. No, but the area of the sanctification is much smaller. 
<laughs> All right, so right. It's just the fact that nothing can. What was that spell called again? It's a uh, uh, it's a holy uh, hollow apple or something. Hollow. It was hollow. hollow. Thank you. Yeah, hollow ground or something. Yeah. They're just hollow, I think. Yeah. Hello. 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 Yeah, right, that's so... a really good spell for this instance. Oh, it's an insanely so... good spell. Yeah. It's easier to explain to him when he he's done with his business. So step by step, what is our plan? Our our plan is to get a uh, Sir Yurik Falcone to. What is it? Hollow the ground looking at the manuscript. Uh, have it prepared for a dimensional binding with the Jimmy and that planar binding spell. Have Willie and someone else try and scout out to find the actual entity. And then once all that's prepared, have Archmage uh, Trandicathon in it score just uh, prepare the spell create the dimension banish it there attempt to defeat it there and if we defeat it there that's job done if we fail to then it's results to the hollow and the planar binding come to think of it I believe we have somebody of note nearby whom we can request to help us she's only at Port Zoon right now I believe if your friend is capable of doing this, uh, Sir Falcon is a marvelous person, but to traverse from Taldoy to here would take him some time. She's closer, and luckily we do have on hand the uh, leader of the Church of the Raven Queen. Interesting. Right. Orson just goes wide-eyed as, what? <laughs> Let's just get her then. Or is there a reason she would protest? <laughs> well, I can request her presence, but currently she is working on sanctifying a, uh, a, a church that was out here that was defiled recently. Hmm. I'll see if we cannot get her assistance on that. Oh. He lifts his hand and quickly outlines a spell in the air, uh, and then... If it helps, use my name when you talking to her. She might... I might actually know who that is. Well, I knew the congregation of the Raven Queen was a small one, but I didn't think everybody knew one another. And he continues the spell. <laughs> It is like the smallest religion that's not a cult. <laughs> I mean, let's if you're being honest, all religion starts as a cult. Yeah. Are you doing okay in there, Willie? Are you are you feeling okay? <laughs> oh, no. Hang. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say around this point, the hour mark is done. You do have that level of exhaustion, Willie. Uh, you have all of that internal bludgeoning and bleeding that you had to suffer as well. Um, so, yeah. Ouch. Go go find the device and uh, please take it out back. Sanitize it. Uh, Willie, you, you look like shit, if I may. Ah. Uh, <laughs> he's got the, the shakes, most... the sweats, everything. Oh, yeah. He'll never the be most... constipated again. <laughs> I'm going to cast prestidigitation, try and just clean up everything on him. Uh, it, uh, almost never seen someone as weary looking as you right now. I, I, I look... Trent does take a big step back from Willie. Oh, that's much better. At... Ouch! Bring it in here! Mary, can you do that? Uh, I yeah, I suppose that. I can do it again. <laughs> glasses. I'm gonna say it takes at least three castings of precipitation to clean the glasses. That's, that's a I... lot of salty. <clears throat> hey, that's quicker than washing it. That's only Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's only 18 uh, seconds of, oh my god. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mary, can you uh, do that to the kitchen as well? Because, let's what? be honest, it, it's go it's kind of fucking rude to just leave that message. I think it is irresponsible to ask your leader to do such a thing. The responsibility should be put onto somebody who misbehaved recently. She lo right. He looks at you, Mary. Just from one liter to another. 
Yes. If you That's... did the do do, then you do the deed to clean it up. Okay, you heard her, Lyrum. Get in there. <laughs> <laughs> Lyrum poofs out of existence. <laughs> No, he's poof- like, uh uh-uh. uh. He's poofing. He does not want to. Uh, how this works, I'm going to snap him back. You taught me this. Get no. in there. Poofs again. <laughs> going to keep. <laughs> going to keep walking, getting closer, closer, and then eventually just poof him in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's terrible. Um, he can't even lift the bucket. I think. I think the. Martin, I will go take care of it. Uh, just. Let me know when you need me, and Jimmy. I will will deal with it. It's not the first time I've had to deal with someone else's shit. (sighs) Is this a frequent occurrence for you? So, where I I think you said we're planar biving and using some shackles. Why are we sanctifying it if it's a celestial? Wouldn't that just help it? No. That's depending how you sanctify. You can choose specific creatures cannot traverse out or in of an area. I believe. Then again, why don't we talk to an expert instead of theory crafting? And I will continue to cast my spell. And he continues to try to cast his spell. Lady we Churisa. continue to interrupt him. <laughs> La- <laughs> Lady Churisa. We need your assistance in Feolin. We may have a solution to this problem. We yes, he used my name. <laughs> we can add additional protection to your church. Also, Dorzin says hello. Horseman, and then just stops. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Might as well name drop. <laughs> Get the help. Sure, you gave him advantage. Yay! And the fact that I'm rolling mango die, that's really good. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. <sighs> Yes, I understand the work you are doing is very important, but this can save a lot of lives. Lives that shouldn't be at risk right now. We just need you to place a spell at a location. We'll explain when you get here. Ah, she is hesitant. She's working on sanctifying those grounds on a much more powerful scale than last time. And to do that takes a year of uninterrupted casting. Oh, shit. Yes. But she's working on it. Well, hopefully she just started. If if she just started, then that's not going to be as bad as... It has been she... three weeks. Yeah, that's not horrible. He looks over at you. I am not familiar with how long a lizard folk lives, but three weeks of one's life is a long time well, to those I mean, of us le- that do not live very long. Well, I'm talking about, like, at least it's not, like, seven months in and you get interrupted. Well, yeah. But... <sighs> I mean, if we have other options, uh, can't so, we just do one of those... Uh, let's borrow uh, what's-her-faces. Uh, Vexalia, she had that book. She probably has, like, a teleportation circle over in Emon. More than that. I have a teleportation circle. She is not allowed to share the information about teleportation circles with me. The Taldori Council does not want any high-level officials from the Empire to have that information. Sildren, Hmm. how many times can you do that walking through plants thing a day? 
I can do it several times, someone shouts from inside. So good. Yeah. He's been to Falcon, Falcone's mansion. He can just walk through the tree there. Willie, did you miss in here? What the hell? It exploded. I noticed. <laughs> oh, I just I, I just thought of the hall pass scene. Just <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, no, no one wants daddy daycare. Oh, that's I, horrendous. I've watched it. Ooh, I, and if we uh, if we do it quick enough, then well, because it's still nighttime there, right? Shouldn't it be? So if we go there and before he uh, does his morning ritual and stuff, then maybe we can ask him to prepare that spell today. Well, if you think that would be faster, however, Lady Teresa is already on her way. Oh, okay. Oh, well. I thought she. I thought that way <coughs> couldn't go. No, she just needed a bit more convincing, and I apparently need to send a great number of my associates over there for the safekeeping during the next year or so. So, looks like that is going to just be another very large expenditure. He looks over and uh, S is standing off to the side, nods, pulls out a notebook and breaks it down quickly. What exactly are they doing over there in that church thing? They were casting this uh, same spell, Sanctify? Was that it? Well, of sorts. It is her information to share, not mine. As was say- requested by the Church of the Raven Queen. Well, I mean, you said it was defiled or something, but... Yes, and not any more anyway. information I am not at liberty to share, unfortunately. But right. you're more than welcome to ask her. Well, I do not envy I haven't run a country. Yes. Go get her. Very well, sir. He goes over to the side and begins casting uh, a teleport spell, and then disappears. He may get asked to help with that later. Mm. Well, anyways, if you wish to get your friend as well, having more people, Sir Yorick is a new father, correct? Yeah. Right. Sorry, I just misunderstood the intention of the other person. I thought by what he said, she wasn't coming. <laughs> it is no problem. But. Well, let's ask him. S already left. Fantastic. He goes and begins sending another sending spell. <laughs> uh, this is getting to be a lot of his spell slot. Sending scrolls, man. It's okay. We don't need a high-level wizard to help us. Well, he's In saving his highest-level spell slots. So, you know. It's just his medium spell slots are... Whew. I mean, we still have to wait uh, like eight hours for Hollow to take effect, anyways. Yeah. Oh, we should probably decide. We should probably decide on a location while they're getting here, then. Sir yeah. Falcone, I am with Dorzin and other friends of yours. We are wondering if we can ask you to come here, deal with a uh, Eldritch Horror problem we have by setting up a Hallowed spell. Um, oh, don't right, worry. He's answering. Go. He's in. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm uh, just uh, talking in game to the group. Okay. Cool. 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 <laughs> um, should we maybe go and. Uh... Yeah, let's go and ask some of these captains and stuff. There must be some, like, deserted islands or something that we can put uh, up. I doubt it. I- I'm thinking the close might be, uh, like, point out the map, like, this point south of Fei Lin right here that's far enough away from the road that it shouldn't impact there and it doesn't look like there's anything inhabited there. But it's it's the mouth of a river and that's... Yeah, that is true. That is incredibly well populated. Also, uh, apparently Sir Yurik is not capable of joining us. He has a daddy daughter ballet practice. He has to. <laughs> Can't he like have some like 
bring your daughter to work thing. <laughs> Given the circumstances, I do not believe he is dumb enough to do that. <laughs> just, just to confirm, I, so I'm not going crazy. His daughter's only one year old, right? Well, that's yes. why it's a daddy daughter ballet. He's playing ballet with her at one. Yeah. <laughs> it's a huge thing in the noble circuit in Iman. Uh, can you move Mary's token for a minute? I want to. Is that a road there? Moment. Yes. Yeah. I'm just trying to see if there's a point that's close enough to us, but far enough away from our road. Uh, We're on a freaking coast town continent, man. There's no. There's no road. That's what's that? Not... I'm. I'm looking a bit uh, further over at the map. This uh, call place called Verst Glade. Over the mountains there. It looks like... This one? No, no. East. Oh, that's not oh. labeled on any map that you have. Oh, okay. Yep. Not labeled, but it's probably... Also, it's very there. far away It from is also the... unknown to anybody in this party. Oh, okay. Guys, there's no place that we're gonna feasibly get nothing, no living <laughs> creature in 25 miles. The only thing I would could even think of would be the inside of a volcano. But... We are over in the um, those mountains where we fought the yetis. Just take over a yeti or a wolf or something. Just put them there with the other trapped primordial things. Others? Oh, um, God never, fucking never mind. damn it, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he has so much good information from you guys. He <laughs> loves you, you have guys. Given this man, the keys to the kingdom. Oh, hey, he likes yeah. you guys a lot. Yeah. Hey, he, he doesn't know the stuff that Kuma knows yet. It hey, just he committed mail fraud, so he's gonna get what's coming to him. Wait a minute, Trent has. <laughs> you gave Ace a, a Trent a copy of Ace's play. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How much shit is in there? It's only gonna take him about an hour to read. No, no, he means like how much shit. I know, the, I know, Ayun's not in there. I know the ritual's not in there, but it's mentioned. <laughs> There's He's a lot. Freaking Vorvik in there? <laughs> oh yeah. So when he it's reads that, he'll know what Dorzen did. Well, you have to keep in mind, Vorvik or Vorvik is still <coughs> like you're allowed to say his name now because he's been dealt with. Yeah. So like. The story of Vordvik has been spread across the Iman, at least. Right. Not the specific that's details that's only privy to all of you, but the actual story has is it, traveled. Is it the spirit in a person right now? Yeah, Dorsen. No, what? it is in an aspect of Craven. Well, I mean, once you kill it, it leaves. Why why are we killing it? Why, I mean, why? We're binding, we're getting the body to be banished to a pocket dimension, and then we're hollifying the ground under it so that when we kill it, the ghost can't go to anyone else. So, um, sorry, this is sort of besides the point maybe a little bit, but am I the only one seeing sort of a like a pattern thing here? I mean, you spoke about the... You had to like trap a uh, primordial in the jungle thing, and there were those yeah. that one over in the mountains. And uh, there seems to be a lot of primordials waking up. Is that something we should be? None concerned? of them are waking up. They're just there. Well, I don't know. Uh, there's this one down there that should be down in the bottom of the sea, but it's woken up. So. Well, it's also technically not a primordial. There are a tremendous amount of uh, coincidences I am learning from you, Mary. And it is information I would be looking into, to say the least. Well, well according, to our, remember, according to our sources, a group of pirates are the ones that end up pulling these up because they dispose of a body wrong. Sources. Our sources... Wishes to remain anonymous. He nods. That is fine. 
But I would like you to get into more contact with them, learn more information, and share that with me, even if you remain anonymous with them. If well, we choose to work with each other, of course. Of course, of course. Like, we know that uh, they disposed of the body that the spirit was trapped in wrong over the Mother Sai Reef, which is what uh, mm. caused these things to... Holy shit. Uh, Great. Come up as... Right next to you, a magical circle just glows brightly, and you see S kind of materialize, and this very, very old, paled skin looking half elven woman steps out, wearing completely black robes all the way down her, and adorned with the symbol of the Raven Queen on her chest. She steps out, looks at all of you. Dorzin, you did not meet her when you were. Oh, lost. okay. I was wondering if she was at the ceremony or not, because a lot of people were there. <laughs> yeah, no. Yes. You, you actually, you did say that everyone was there. Well, everybody who was there was there. She wasn't. Everyone there. in Amon was there. <laughs> no, no. Every you said everyone from the uh, Raven Queen's church or whatever. Was yes, there. the ones who could be were there. She. Oh. Talk to her. You'll find out. Oh. She steps forward. Well, hello, all of you. My name is Lady Teresa. I am the head of the Church of the Raven Queen. Hello. Hello. It is um, a pleasure to meet you both. Yes, you do. My name is Mary. Well... Amaryllis von Pontifex, uh, if you must know, but you can call me Mary. She nods at you. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Kuma. Nods as well. Selrin. Nod. You're Dorzen. It's a pleasure to meet you. And I, like, respectfully bow, because I, hey, I have a position. She has a bigger position. She's, I know that. She smiles and just pat you on the shoulder <laughs> e. and you obviously know who I am yes you're the bratty boy <laughs> oh, I, I like her already they smile and he like leans in kisses her on both cheeks it is a pleasure to see you again Shavisa you as well Trent so as it was explained to me over a short period of time, you need me to hollow some grounds for you. Correct. To deal with a possession. A celestial spirit that has possessed a primordial celestial mix. The aspect of Craven, correct? Yes. The celestial uh, spirit known as a uh, Harrison. Oh, hmm? Kuma just said that out loud. No, I was, I I'm was trying to I stop was, you, literally. I was busy typing my notes, but someone would have definitely attempted to like stop. I'm literally Kuma. trying to stop you in my. Ten what seconds. is it called? It's Kuma. Dorzin was... puts his hand over Kuma's snout. Is that a reason you are withholding information from me? It is more along the lines of its name should not be known. Information is a free-flowing circuit that allows us to empower ourselves instead it's of relying. Heresy. God fucking damn it, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> you're, on baby, you're on doors and shit list now. <laughs> is just I mean, leave. we're trying to work together here, and you all yeah. seem to be, oh, you're so interested in just keeping oh. your secrets and everything. And that's fine enough, but if we're going to actually achieve something, then we need to work together. So that's it. She raises her eyebrow at you, Mary, when you say that. Trent will gesture. Uh, by the way, she is the leader of this group. And although they may seem like they are not very much to handle, they are the only party we've had so far capable of quelling one of these aspects of Craven, as we learned they are called. 
due to a very cunning and brilliant plan concocted by a brilliant oh. mind. <clears throat> Egotistical as well. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, no, 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 that one. So she begins walking, and uh, S has to, like, hold his hand out. She's, like, for a half-elf, in human years comparison, probably, like, 90. <coughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, so she's... So half-elf comparison, she's old. Oh, yeah, she's ancient. Well, well I mean, she's a half-elf. That means half she's, like, 250. Like 300 or something. Yeah, she's, like, 250, probably a little bit more than that. Like, she's, she's up there. <coughs> so... You're hoping that I am able to create an area that can bind a Celestial to a specific area. And the Celestial's name, she gestures at Mary, was already told to us. Correct. We want it. We have a plan to banish it to a pocket dimension that Trent is going to create. However, we want several fail safes just in case the plane collapses before we kill it since it can possess anything within a 25 mile radius. And by binding it to a location, that should help prevent that. At the very least, we can set up a zone. And what is your plan if this creature can simply remove my magic from binding? The plan from after that one is well, Jimmy has a item that might send it to a plane sort at random, depending on what he just explained. I'm not wholly familiar with magic. So you'll make it somebody else's problem? No, more like a... There is a chance it's apparently that's what happened and initially when a group of pirates disposed of the its old bindings inappropriately. <sighs> There's a lot of stuff that has happened before we got here that has led up to this. Complicated matters. I would have to say so. If I ever get my hands on those pirates, I'm going to wring their necks. I know that much. That's old body. If it's still there, would... We be, is it possible <coughs> to potentially reseal it back there and then, then properly dispose of it? I would need to have information on the ritual that originally sealed it. Hmm. I don't know if it, it was if it was um, trapped inside that body for a long time then perhaps it has some sort of uh, attunement almost to it. Maybe it could be easier to trap it back inside that specific thing, body, whatever it actually is. That's what my my thought was as well. We'll pull out the mansion again. Like, wasn't there something, uh, something called a legends lore? They could maybe tell you more about that. <sighs> she looks at Trent, and Trent just shrugs. Yes, that is a uh, spell. We have access. But we need, if we can have more information at our disposal before we begin casting it, that would be <coughs> incredibly important. Not to mention, I am almost out of ivory strips. That should not be an issue. I have plenty. Right. Because I'm trying to remember everything that we were told about the thing that, because uh, out of character, it it went insane, it was split, and then it was bound. Went insane because of a god, and it got freaking bound, and then did crazy shit. I think. Are you talking about the aspect of Craven or the aspect of Herency? Aspect of Herency. Yeah. All right. Her uh, all right, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Mary. What were you saying? Um, Herency was the one who turned Craven insane. Right. Yeah, that's that's what I was trying to remember, too. Yeah, so, yeah, Herency was the Celestial that did that, but the Celestial that is insane is the one that's the aspect of Craven. 
and that's the one that's bound to the eldritch horror creature things and so well sorry, that just... is the eldritch horror creature things aspect of craven yeah. is what they are yeah, yeah sorry. so um, heresy itself isn't insane what were you saying silvern oh no i was just gonna admit like out of character i'm so fucking confused because this there's so much shit here that we have to piece together can you let silvern keep talking sorry yeah no it was, it was but basically that it's but it also when it comes to dimensional alter timeline timey-wimey stuff it's oh we're not like, doing anything like, timey-wimey right now you guys well, it's don't... not timey-wimey but it's kind of in that whole interdimensional sort of yeah stuff it's blimey well we know the aspect of heresy has come in contact with the aspect of craven before and is currently what has driven the aspect of craven insane that apparently um jimmy you you, you remember more of this than i do jimmy's in the kitchen still cleaning up well that's the gist of it and um well I mean, if we were able to trap this spirit, then maybe we could uh, at least converse with it on somewhat equal terms. I never tried to converse with a crazy person, Mary. But the spirit itself isn't crazy. That is correct. The what spirit is not crazy. The aspect of Craven is crazy because of the spirit. Right. The spirit is what's making the aspect crazy. So, yeah, the super some... mech is crazy because the pilot controlling it makes it crazy. Exactly. Mary wants to talk to the pilot. So, yeah, it has to have some sort of goal, some intention. And if we can at least ascertain that, then... Well, maybe it'll help us avoid some other cataclysm we don't know of yet. Well, know. we already have some clues. Dorzin, you remember, you mentioned it was saying things in that primordial celestial mix. Can you share again what the, those were? They were hungry, angry, and in a form of mourning, as far as I could tell. The last one's open to interpretation. So if I were to base this off of anything, hungry is a physical reaction. That is the aspect itself. But the mourning and the anger, that could potentially be from... The anger could be from the aspect, but I also believe it is being driven by the spirit as well as the mourning. So it is mourning something, and it is in currently in the angry stage of that mourning. Well, I would think. our source said something about um, the spirit, celestial spirit, introducing the concept of light, I think, to uh, the aspect of Craven, and or at least making it aware of the light somehow. Oh. Yeah, so now the Craven seek the light. Even Good though it try. hurts them. Indeed. Yeah. Well, it, when a bear so... is shot in the woods, its instinct tells it to kill the thing that shot. This is true. Ah. <sighs> All right, guys, I finished cleaning up the kitchen. Uh, it's been about an hour. Uh, are we good to go? Uh, Jimmy, roll me a history check when you look up at Lady Teresa. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who are you, Kool-Aid Man? Uh, oh, dear oh, God. 25 is more than enough. Um... <clears throat> So she is the leader of the church in Vasselheim, the representative from the many different chapels and gods that are worshipped out there, but specifically for the Raven Queen, 
the one who conducts every noble funeral service that happens out there and many honorific funeral services as well that happen out there. And you've attended quite a few of them. What are you doing here? Helping us, Jimmy. What are you all doing with him? Why did she come here? I'm, I'm sensing some history here. But if you... Yeah, you she, can... she's, the, she's the priest. For the, the Raven the Queen. Raven. And you're a wanted criminal. No, I'm not wanted. Since when was that redacted? Since I paid the fines and I left. I can actually attest to that the bounty was removed. Orson hands <laughs> o stands over to Jimmy, puts his hand on him. I do not know what it is that happened in Vasselheim, but he aided us in the battle against Vormik. This is the plan you guys came up with? To to get help from, from her? Why do we need her? Because she's the one who can cast the sanctification. And what is your problem with her exactly? I'm sure if she can help, she'll do it, but I... We, we know other priests. What was Sir Yurik doing, Dorzen? Being Sir Yorick. <laughs> Ballet for his one-year-old daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so do we have a plan? Jimmy just like turns away from Teresa and looks over at Mary. Well, we have um, a sort of working plan so far where, um, okay, point of order. A, first, we're trying to decide on a spot to put the Magnificent Mansion entrance, exit. And <clears throat> then we're going to... Sanctify the grounds around it to prevent the... the to prevent heresy from leaving. from leaving the circle. Mm -hmm. So when, if and when the mansion falls and we haven't found a way to permanently deal with it, it is at least trapped there. Then we were planning to do dimensional bondings in that location so it can't escape as well. Right. And once that's all set up, have Willie using the cleaned as of the eagle now to see which of the uh, aspects of Craven it is currently possessing, lure that aspect to the area or far enough away from the others where we can banish it into the demiplane and then deal with it from there. Exactly. Okay, so we're going to pick the spot then. Um, let's, let's go find the spot. Right, well, um, I think we should confer with some of the locals that know the area a bit better for a suitable... Ooh, they, they all left. Yurik, nobody's here. The town is empty. Yeah, if when Mary, I... Not, not Yurik. Yurik. Mary. Oh, yeah. Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Wishful <Yurik>. thinking. <laughs> it always be Yurik. The... We have to discuss before the game. All right. What, what about the Marquis? Aren't the, the guards or whatever? Don't they know the area? How will everyone yeah. leave? I so have... I have excused the Celezo from this location. Well, After the information given to me last night, I wish to remove as many individuals who would just get in our way as possible. Right, fair enough. But, well, there must be someone not too far away that can at least tell us if there is a suitable area. Well... Some not too far away, maybe? Just judging on the map alone, considering that they're all right <coughs> here, we have to choose something within relative distance of Feolin and, and the uh, bay here. They're not all just right there. Well, here. Oh, yeah, but we have to choose really? something that's in a relative distance of here, so... Well, there are the many spores? islands out there. Many, many islands, in fact. Um... Though we would need it to be far enough away that none of them would reach out and go there. Not to mention we have not had any contact other than on those Twinward Isles. Why do not we not go there? 
it is close to the location. Is that wrong? Feel free to explain. What'd you say, Willie? Let me know when I get back. Yeah, you're back. No, I went I went to the store because I was buying. Oh, there's no okay. stores. There's no store. Nobody's in this town. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've expressed this about taken. five okay. times across the past like five sessions. Guys, when we have to do it here, just add the guards block off the road. Do it here because it doesn't make sense to go to the islands because we know people are there. We um, 100 percent can put it 25 miles that we put literally in this area. And it won't reach uh we'll put it right here near the town and it won't reach out to the ocean we have them block off the roads you should be good my and concern right now is if you kill the aspect of craven what stops the spirit from possessing one of you nothing except that we can see the spirit willie can see it kuma can see it and I have these, and he holds up the shackles. And if it does possess one of us, it's not going to get away. As well as, as long as the hollow, the hollowed ground remains that way, if one of us is possessed by such a spirit, it should theoretically not allow us to leave that area anyways. And that would at least stop what's going on in the oceans, and people wouldn't be dying. It would help contain the situation and meditate any more damage so, done all of you are welcome to the idea of one of you sacrificing yourselves to just have it inhabit your body yeah i'm fine with that that's if no. we fail and i don't think we're gonna fail not be the first well i don't see that as a failure i see that as an opportunity you need to kill the aspect of craven it is inside of in order to get it out correct from what we understand, unless there's another way that has not been discovered, correct? And then, is... based off of what you have said, it goes to inhabit somebody else. Correct. Wait, aren't we... Sidran, isn't that staff of your capable... Yes, capable... it's... Just need yes, to I it. may... I'm aware of what I need to do, Mary. Yeah, I'm just saying it so the others know. We don't actually need to kill that big thing we should probably kill it well uh, well I feel like that's a bit more of an extra what are you talking do you think your staff will expel the creature from the other creature I was under the assumption your staff would banish the aspect of Craven into it will the other area it will do so banish is it capable of extracting somebody if you would like, I would cast Legend Lore on your weapon. No. So we can see what it can actually do. So now I... I thought the whole point of sanctifying the grounds is it's not going to be able to jump bodies. No, it that can is... still jump bodies that are in the grounds. When it gets expelled, all of you get expelled. It's not just it. Yeah. I'm just trying to remember, though, is because... Like, about the information about the staff like i know it was it, it banishes it things. banishes what you hit yeah, to, that's, yeah that's all you know though or it can banish what you hit doesn't mean it will no from what i know about this staff already it, what it's capable of is dealing with entities such as this so i will use it as for such that <sighs> He rubs the bridge of his nose. <sighs> you people in your secrets are going to get more people killed, including yourselves. Fine. Let's just put it all out there, and if all of you die, that is... He points at you, Sylvan. Your fault. Uh, anyone have a hundred gold worth of ruby dust? I mean, diamond dust? I do. Can I borrow Why? that? I'm just going to use... I, I feel exhausted, and I'm probably not going to want to be exhausted for this. I, quick question out of character. Are we planning on doing this today? Like, because it takes eight hours for the... Um... Yeah, but we can... got to get to the place and begin that ritual first. Yeah. Then we can do everything else. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. during that eight hour period that we have the time to set up. scout and find the actual aspect. Ah, uh, okay. Because we don't know which one's possessing it. That's 
Willie, also attune to the glasses, damn it. Yeah, that's what he is doing. Okay. Because we got to get Willie to fly and uh, look down and find which one it is. I'm just gonna have him far step. He can breathe underwater and shit. I'm just gonna have him far step through our water. He's been, he's been, have the glasses. Willie, do you not remember that there is about 25 to 30 miles of aspects of Ravens where just one scout, everyone except for you could barely kill by themselves? Not killing him, disappearing. Far steps literally disappeared. Through 25 miles of them. As far as he could see. If he could see it, that's all that matters. Okay. Oh my god, this is. Yeah, yeah, you guys wanting to be so secretive is actually going to make this a lot harder. <laughs> I get... Oddly uh... enough, Mary's the honest one here. <laughs> <laughs> because Mary's also pragmatical. Yeah, yeah, she's like, it's... oh, fuck. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> she knows when she's out of her depth. Yeah. I mean, but I'm not as smart as well how my character is supposed to be, so I don't actually know how to deal with this. I think... We will go ahead and go on break, everybody. And when we come back, hopefully all of you have a game plan for what we're actually doing. We'll be right back. I need to pee real quick. Okay.